Wow. Um, Karina, girl, you've got mad respect in the community, right? We all know that you're one of the OGs of React channels. And um, Beck and her fiance, they're not married yet, right? Fiance, um, reached out to you to do this exclusive. I have a little bit of an affinity for Beck, not only because um, they seem to be a very cool person, but they share a name with me, right? <laughs> like, oh, Beck, okay, let's go. All right, so let's cover this video. Um, besides, everybody loves your intros. They're always so good. Am I upset that Eric and Ricky still talk to Amber? To be honest, uh, we haven't spoken in almost a year. A few different times that people in my life tried to get me to leave her. Um, my family had an intervention with me. They took me to a park and was like, you know, we are begging you to leave her. It's when I would be hanging out with Eric and Ricky playing video games. Uh, and Amber would set timers for when I had to be back to hang out with her. Hello, everybody. In today's video, I am doing a Q&A with Beck. So a few days ago, Beck and their partner reached out to me here and wanted to speak off of youtube and reach out to me because in regards to that the interventions in this case it sounded like it was the right thing right beck actually needed an intervention she was getting used it was a terrible situation for them and i'm sorry i said she i i'm i'm trying very hard to use the right pronouns but I am 50 so it's hard for me to remember to do this right oh my god there's a spider sorry I had a spider coming down um my brother who is completely messed up and has abused me throughout my entire life tried to say that I needed an intervention and um, that we should all go to family therapy where they basically would have gotten together and beaten me up on lies that they were telling about me and I said no whatever you're the people who need to go to therapy like I don't know what's going on with you guys but like you are interfering with people's relation. I'm, I'm diving too deep. <laughs> I'm diving too deep right now. But I was like, are you for real? You're interfering with people's relationships in this family. And you're trying to tell me it's my fault? Are you for real? Oh my god, it got really bad yesterday, by the way. He lied to my mom about why he got fired as a diving coach. I'm not going to get into it because I don't know that there was ever any real, like, consequences for what he did. Um, but I know what he did, and she should remember what he did. And she literally was like, oh, well, he wasn't filling out his time cards correctly. How is that possible? He worked for that diving team for 10 years. He just all of a sudden forgot how to fill out his time card. That's interesting. But you're y'all going to uh, listen to him on his bullshit about me? Oh, okay. They wanted, Beck wanted to do a Q&A on someone else's channel. They did not wish to do a Q&A on their channel. I agreed to it, so we did speak off of YouTube. I put a community page post asking y'all to go and ask Beck whatever questions 
you guys wanted the most relevant, interesting, and the well, this is very brave of Beck to do as well because obviously Amberlynn's out there, she can't keep Beck's name out of her mouth. She keeps talking about her, she kept talking about her, um, them, uh, to her placeholder girlfriend Alexis. And she can't shut her fucking mouth about this particular relationship. So I would get why Beck would want to clear the air a little bit, right? Is it going to play? Oh, we got a Kermit. Sorry. Most thumbs up questions were answered by Beck. I want to thank Beck and their fiance so much for their time. Uh, obviously, not all questions were answered. Obviously, I fully respect Beck's decision not to answer certain questions. And of course, due to time restrictions, no one can answer every single question. But a lot of very interesting questions were answered. So this is part one. I will link Beck's channel down below. There's going to be a part two that I will work on and put up as soon as I can. As well as I just wanted to say thank you to Beck for their time with this. Thank you for reaching out to me. And also uh, congratulations on Beck's engagement to their fiance. I wish you guys a lifetime of happiness. Okay. Also, you see this nice Kermit? He definitely helped me out of this video. Not really. But have you ever wondered, I would like to purchase myself a Kermit. Kermits are always in charge of all the tea sometimes all right here's my little affiliate view products tab it will pop up that's my affiliate thing if you want to purchase yourself a kermit go right ahead have a kermit and be happy so basically we're going to get into it okay as always i am personally sharing my own opinions not facts i'm publicly accessible information made public by the way just like as a side note um i was having a conversation with my neighbor this morning and she's like, you have to get a walker. <laughs> you have to get a walker. You keep falling. You're hitting your head. You gotta get a walker. And I'm like, I'm only 50. I don't want to be that little old lady. Come on. Can't I just get a cane? It's like, no. Cane's not good enough. You need a walker. Oh my god. First, by public figures, this video is for entertainment purposes only, and I would urge you to please do not go to anyone's channel that is mentioned and leave mean spirited, negative, discouraging, disparaging comments. Please do not do this. Yeah, maybe Hannibal, you should actually give that message to your audience as well, right? This is part one. These are the voice notes that were sent to me based on the questions that the audience asked. Here we go. How I'm doing now, I am doing very well. I am extremely happy. I have a life completely different than the life I had. And you can hear it in her voice, their voice. You can hear that she is happy. Uh, they are happy and enjoying this relationship and have finally found what it's like to be treated with respect. Amberlynn is so gross, you guys. Last time I talked to you guys, it's almost like, you know, you get that feeling where you just want to up and leave and start over. Well, that's kind of what I did. And I up and left and started over, and I'm engaged to the love of my life, and oh. I am ha happy for the first time in a really, really long time. And it's nice to wake up and not feel so depressed like I used to. It's, it's a great feeling to feel like life is mattering and like what i'm doing that's got to be a lot harder than like how i deal with it right so if you're internalizing it and you are just suffering from depression from everything that's happening to you that's got to be really hard
y'all. Um, for me, when I, I'm pretty patient, like I wait a while before I actually like go off. But I'll tell you, I was raging yesterday and I went off on a lot of people. And um, do I have regret? No. Every single one of those people was using me and I let them get away with it for years. And so I feel like it's fully deserved the earful they got from me yesterday. What I'm going to work for matters. As far as healing and recovering my self-esteem, uh, yeah, I do feel like I am healing. Um, I still have a hard time with, you know, my mom, especially, you know, it being not too long ago that it was the anniversary. Um, and from everything in my past, I've definitely, definitely already healed from it. Like, I'm nothing, none of it hurts anymore. I'm completely over things. Um, but as far as my own self-worth and self-esteem, that still is a deeper issue that has stemmed from childhood that I'm still trying to work on. But, you know. Well, you're doing a great job. So look at you doing an interview with Karina Kaboom, one of the OGs of the React Channel Network. And here you are telling your your truth. You're doing the best that you can with what you have. And um, I think you're going to be just fine. You could probably become a motivational speaker at some point. Anyway, tell us about the new girlfriend. I hope she treats you well. Um, I will tell you about my fiance. Uh, she treats me very well. She treats me the best I've ever been treated in a relationship ever. Um, it's actually kind of um, culture shocky in a way that, you know, I didn't know that I could feel the way that I do as strongly as I do. Um, it's definitely a very nice feeling. Um, and it's definitely nice to feel like I deserve her. And she does. She makes me very happy. Um. I just wanted to say congratulations again to Beck and their fiance. Just when I heard the way that Beck speaks, say it's obvious that this person is the one and Beck is very much so in love. And I have to tell you that I am so, so, so happy for Beck and their fiance. They both seem like really wonderful people just in general, just to communicate with like. Oh my God, Amberlynn's going to have a meltdown, you guys. I can't wait for it. It's, uh, she can't stand that Beck is moving forward in life and actually experiencing happiness because she's got to control everybody around her, right? Outside of YouTube or, you know, all that stuff. And I just hearing like the way that Beck even speaks about, you know, their fiance, it's just, it, it's a different, it's a shift in the voice. It's a shift in the mind. It's a shift in life. And I am so, so happy. You can feel it that this is a different, healthy relationship. And I am so, so, so glad that Beck is in a fantastic place you know, and wants to live their life and be happy because everyone deserves happiness. Well, yeah. even evil Kermit. Okay, so very happy for you guys. Now let's get to some serious, serious drama. I'm not surprised about things that are coming out about Amber from her ex-friends and ex-partners. Um, I know what I experienced the... Uh, three or four years we were together I know what my family was put through I know what they still have talked to me well and it's a lot easier to come out in numbers right so they were scared of how Amberlynn would trash them 
if they came out, but now everybody's coming out at the same time. And she's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Everybody's lying about me. Everybody's lying about me. Okay. About, um, I know what it, what happened with my mom and, you know, what it did to me and her. And I know what it did with my sister. And it's just, you know, things got a little rough. And, I mean, they mended things there toward the end. But, like, she's blown it with everybody else since. And I'm just, I figured she would try to learn. But it doesn't seem like it. Amber will never learn. She gets exposed by many, many, many people. And I have a feeling that other people will continue to expose her. And she'll never learn because she thinks she's never doing anything wrong. Now, none of you, none of you are ready for this. This is like what made Beck realize that they wanted to break up with Amber. I am not surprised by Amber's behavior, but none of you are ready. When did I realize you needed to end things with Amber? What was the final straw in the relationship? Um, there was one day where um, she had started pretending to be me in text messages and um, because I had had a group message with Eric and Ricky that we had had for years. And it was we had had it long before I'd even known who Amber was. And she was mad that she wasn't added to that one, that she had been added to a new one that we created for all four of us. And so she was pretending to be me, asking for her to be put in our... Um, uh, old friend group one from years ago and Amberlynn why you gotta be such a stalker it's so weird it's so weird that you do this to everyone that you are romantically involved with it is so bizarre that you have absolutely no trust and you were constantly spying on your mates. They automatically knew that it wasn't me, <laughs> but they could tell that it was her. And me and her just got into a big argument about that. And we, it was so bad that we just ended up going to sleep. We were in the living room. I was on one chair and she was on the couch. And we went to sleep for a really long time. And when we woke up, we started fighting again. And then I ended up going to my family's that weekend. And that's whenever I decided that I didn't want to continue being in this toxic relationship anymore. That um, I know I was so worried about what would happen to her, who would take care of her, who would take care of the animals. That's why I stayed so long. Um, I was just so concerned with... You know, I did care about this person. This was my friend. These animals, I did love these animals. I felt an obligation to take care of them. And I guess it also tied into my trauma of just needing to feel needed. And I think that was also why I even stayed. Because I also just felt like this person had nobody else. And I didn't deserve better. So that's why I stayed as long as I did. And um, I realized... Well, Beck, I was in a bad relationship from 2005 to 2012. So I feel you on this one. I did ultimately kick him the fuck out of my house. Um... Amber Lynn, what is wrong with you? Oh my god. You can't treat anybody with respect. You can't. I don't think my ex, by the way, from when we broke up in 2012, I don't think he's dated anybody since because he's that much of a dick that, um, it's difficult for him to actually find women that would be interested. I found him funny, but I we met online. We traveled to 
see each other for a year. He'd come out here, I'd go out there to Virginia for a year. And then as soon as I moved out there, it, the rage, oh my God, he was constantly screaming at me. And I'll tell you, to see hysterical men who are screaming their bloody heads off, not attractive, guys. Nope. <laughs> not attractive a little bit scary in fact and I've met a couple of you since so there's that as it was unhealthy that it was doing neither one of us any favors and that she should move on and hopefully move on go live with her mom or you know whatever she needed to do and I wanted to move back home. I wanted to be with my family and my friends and live my life. And didn't she also already like um, move wifey in Jade, Feline? What? Are, where did she come up with these names? By the way, um, she had already moved a new girlfriend in while Beck was still living there, right? I was ready to let go. I had been ready to let go long before we had even ended it. <laughs> I, I can't even. I just want to thank Beck for their candor. So is anyone here really surprised that Anne Boleyn pretended to be Beck to try to get added to an older like group chat between Eric and Ricky and Beck and did not foresee that that was going to be a problem. So I know that one of the biggest questions on my community page was pretty much what was the final straw? Why did you guys really break up? Because Beck. Well, I, I don't think it's surprising that Amber Lynn thought she could pose as Beck because she is that stupid, right? I don't think that's all that surprising that she tried to drop into this group chat and pose herself as Beck. I think it's more surprising that she didn't realize that people are smarter than her and can figure it out, right? Being the kind individual that they are did not release that information. so. Anne Boleyn, you're welcome for the next few weeks of your live stream content where you're going to try to desperately deny it. Yes. I'd love to see you get yes. out of this one, honey. Yes. Actually, I don't care. She's just going to make something up. Look, as far as like this situation, you, you all you all weren't ready for it. But is anyone really here surprised? Hello, Damon White. How are you doing? Damien White, Damon White. For those of you that don't know, Anne Boleyn Reed, in my opinion, has a very large history of going ahead and pretending to be other people, going on fake accounts. She actually pretended to be a man named Damien White or Damon White and infiltrated a Facebook group about herself and pretended to be him and trashed herself and then defended herself. Well, the thing is, is that what baffles me about Amberlynn Reed is that she continuously does negative, hectic. <laughs> Hectic. I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but th does the fun ever start, Amberlynn? She continues to do these sinister things behind the scenes. And if I could ask Amberlynn Reed one question, I know she'll do a live stream eventually in response to this. Amberlynn, why do you continue to do sinister things that are very blatant and obvious behind the scenes and then think you're not going to get caught? How did Amberlynn actually believe that Eric and Ricky wouldn't understand that it's her and she was pretending to be Beck, when obviously if Beck and Eric and Ricky already had that existing group chat, isn't it obvious that Beck wouldn't ask themselves, hey, can I please be added to a chat I was already in? So obviously this, in my opinion, stems. I would love to ask Beck more questions. I don't know if they would be interested in doing another Q&A, but I would, just, I would just love to ask a question of, this is my question, if there's only three of you in the Facebook group, you're all probably like moderators, administrators, whatever. Why would she even need to ask? She could have added her own account. Like how dumb is this bitch? 
do you think, and this is a question for everybody in the audience, do y'all think that Amberlynn, like, thought that something was being said in those group chats? Like, she just needed to know what was going on in the old group chat. Like, honestly, Amberlynn, you are never going to have, in my opinion, a relationship that works out if this is how you behave. That is betrayal like you betray your partner so bad to go ahead and pretend to be them uh, terrible but amberlynn has a million fake accounts we've talked about that before uh a bunch of sock accounts and even having sock accounts quite frankly in your own personal relationship rinse lather does the fun ever start and as far as beck saying that they they were ready to end things with Amberlynn prior to the breakup. I think we all saw the videos. If you saw the Beck era, you saw those videos that Beck was not, in my opinion, remotely interested in being in those videos. And you could tell that there was a problem in the relationship, which Amberlynn denied. Amberlynn, so you out here impersonating Beck. Does the fun ever start? I'd love to hear your answer to this one, sweetheart, on your new live stream. Again, a huge thanks to Beck for their candor. Let's continue. Uh, what do I think of Amber calling me money hungry and trying to capitalize on my live streams? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what she was doing with me. Like the whole time I was being used for live streams. And that ties into the next question. Did I ever get paid from the live streams I did with her? No, I didn't. No, I didn't, because she said that all of that money had to go toward all the bills. I don't even know how much she got. I have no idea. I don't even know how much I was supposed to get if I was supposed to get half. I have no idea. I was just told you do these. Why should you try factor? They're but then she was like, mm, you got to pay bills. So, no, I didn't see anything from it. Um, I think whenever we broke out, uh, broke up and I moved out, I think she gave me like 100 to $200, and that's how I ended up getting the U-Haul. She got a Christmas gift, just like Alexis. She got a Christmas gift. Thanks for that, Amber Lynn. I think, something like that. Yeah. Um, but, no, I'm definitely not money hungry for trying to do my own live streams that was just i don't know i had periods where i wanted to come back and i had all these great ideas and i would get these big ambitious like you know i have i still have videos on my phone of like um ghost adventures and um h hiking me and my sister went to uh the natural arch i've got videos from that that i haven't uploaded i just i became are you, so talking, are you talking about that natural arch in virginia i've been there i went there with my ex we did a bed and breakfast and then went to we didn't stay late enough to see the color changes though but we did walk around the back where they've got the little nature walk and all that Anywho, I'm going to pause for a minute because my phone is dying. And um, so I got to charge it up. And I can't do that if I'm trying to record a video, right? So let's hang tight. Okay, I got a little charge, not a lot of charge. Um... But let's see how much more I can get through. So depressed, I couldn't even work anymore. And my sister and Logan had to take care of me. And they were the only ones who were were there for me um, during that period of time. So, um, no, I wouldn't say I was money hungry. This refers to Amberlynn's ex-bestie Alexis uh, pretty much spilling the tea and saying that Amberlynn believed, in her opinion, and allegedly said to Alexis that Beck was money hungry for doing live streams. Amberlynn has literally monetized everyone in her life. And the... Yeah, girls, girls, girls. You're the only ones who are allowed to have channels. Only you. Amberlynn, only you, Chantel, only you, Eugenia. None of the rest of us are allowed to have YouTube channels because if we do it, we are money hungry. We're not even making money.
off of what we do. The projection is crazy. Audacity to call someone else money hungry. You monetize destiny in the lab. Do we need to continue? Like, you monetized your partners and you monetized literally everything. I mean, get a Kermit, Amber. Seriously. But moving on from that, to leave Beck destitute, to leave Beck with $200 after they broke up. That's that's all she gave her, $200? Amberlynn, get your receipts out. Can you prove that that's not true? Guarantee you can. I believe Beck. I stand with Beck and justice for Beck. That's my opinion. You know, I feel like Beck is incredibly kind in relationships. As you heard, Beck didn't even want to leave Amber because they were terrified. How would Amber take care of herself? How would she take... I know. I know, Beck. I know. It took me a whole year to totally get out of my relationship with my toxic, toxic boyfriend because I felt like, well, he moved here from the East Coast. He doesn't know anybody. Where is he going to go? He's got all these problems now because he has a DUI. Um, hurt my car. I had to pay for the repairs on that bullshit. And my car got impounded for a night. Thanks for that. Mm. And uh, then my mom and my son and I took shifts driving him back and forth to work because he lost his license over this DUI. And it took me a full year to figure out how to get out of this situation and basically you just have to come to the revelation that you can't save this person you can't protect them you're not going to make life better for them and so you have to just let them go you gotta let them go and that's ultimately what I did was goodbye goodbye son it out and then even after that he refused to actually rent like a u-haul and get all of his shit out of my house so he came over every weekend for over two months taking small bits of things at a time but he took things that didn't even belong to him including my diploma from Pepperdine and I uh, left it on my doorstep on Mother's Day. Mm, very interesting. Left it there and called from, I don't know, a block away or something and said, check your door. It was dirty. It looked like it had been stepped on. My bachelor's degree. Yeah. Thanks for that. It was Mother's Day. I was there with my mom. Are you... F he didn't ring the doorbell. He did not knock. He just put stuff on my doormat that it looks like he stepped on. And he abandoned his... You know, I keep hearing this from Chantel. My cats! My cats! Your cats are living in homes currently where they're being taken care of, right? My ex abandoned his two cats with me and I already had a cat of my own, right? And they didn't exactly get along. So my mom ended up taking his cats and letting them live the rest of their lives, because they were older cats, in um, her little courtyard that had some chick chicken wire on the bottom, because they did have a fear of, like, rattlesnakes coming in. So they had some chicken wire on the bottom, but the, the cats were too old to even try and jump. They were that old. So they got to finish their lives at my mom's house. And he just purely abandoned his pets. So I really don't want to hear it from you, Chantel. 
when your cats are in a more loving situation now than they were with you in your filthy villa that you didn't clean. Take care of her pets. So Beck continued to stay, even though they were just like not being treated well. Right. And so right. that is why I am so happy that they are being treated well now and have healed and I'm, I have to say, my own personal commentary here is I'm so thankful that you are with your partner. Because I've spoken to... There's only... Let's be real. There's only so much healing you can do. You can move forward. You can meet somebody better. You can have a better relationship. But there was always that experience in Beck's life of being in such a toxic situation. And that's why she's coming back to it now to address questions because it was that traumatic for her. And I know how she feels. My breakup was in 2012. It is now 2024 and I still feel how used I was. He owed me $10,000 at the end of it. Because he was unwilling to get a job for the first six months. And he didn't want to have to pay his side of rent, which we had discussed, and bills, utilities. So he stiffed me every month. Every month. He owed me $10,000 dollars by the time I finally kicked him out their partner Beck's partner just a little bit emotionally intelligent amazing fabulous person and you deserve every bit of happiness that you get Beck okay with her so happy for you both just have to say that but the audacity to not give the money from the live stream so in my videos a lot of the times I reference this I can't find the screenshot my ex-boyfriend uh, was so pissed at me for having a job where I could work from home. I was making a decent salary. I could work from home. And he's like, why are you here all the time? And I'm like, dude, you, you're here because you don't have a job. I'm here because I work from home. And it's my home. And I own it. And you're a guest here. I can't. Oh my God. Anymore, but now we don't need it because Beck just told you again. There was an older screenshot where Beck had reiterated what they just said now that pretty much, and you can go back and you could fact check this if you want. There's an older live stream on Amber's channel where Amber publicly hired Beck to do live streams with Amber and privately and promised Beck the money. And literally all Beck got was $200. Amber Lynn Reed used to make between two to three hundred thousand dollars a year she no longer makes this but she used to i've been working here for 11 years i can promise you that that's what amberlynn used to make she used to make way more money than she does right now and she does fabulous right now as well okay so karina i'm only gonna say this because this is my mom obviously she was a teacher for like 28 years and so she came down on me pretty hard based on my writing, based on how I spoke, everything else. She came down on me very hard for using the word, um, um, uh, restated. No, what you're supposed to say is restated not what you just said because um that is the more correct version of talking about when somebody is going over what they've said in the past they are restating something that's what you should have said. But I'm just I'm just being finicky right now because I've had a hard week. All right. To not
give half of the money to Beck when you hired them privately and publicly is honestly wrong. It's just wrong. And by the way, I believe it's, um, you know, if you hire somebody and you don't give them the money, hmm, is that very, very legal? I also wanted to say, for Amber to say, oh, the money from the live streams. Yeah, it's like the money I was going to give you. Like the money you were going to give their mom, right, Amber? Right. So I understand that Amber had to pay bills, but their agreement was sh that Amber Lynn, she was going to give Beck at least some of the money and to give $200 when Beck had to leave their own apartment because you moved somebody else in. It's just sad. It's just sad. And listen, the best revenge is living a good life. And that's where Beck is at. Now, I told you before, Beck did not see any of the money that Amberlynn made from the live streams. The reason that it's unfair isn't just because Amberlynn hired Beck, but because the live streams only garnered the amount of views. Well, Amberlynn's a cheap whore, just like Chantel. So we can't be surprised by this. Men and women do this to their partners if they're assholes like that. It's happened to me, it's happened to Beck, it's happened to everybody who has ever dated Amberlynn. It's happened to uh, Chantel's exes as well, because she can't even get them to agree to be publicly their partner, her partner, right? I'm not, we're not together. <laughs> Except for Salah, he's a bot bitch. That they did because of Beck's presence. Beck owned those live streams. They made them interesting. They were the ones doing all the talking. They were pretty much the talent. And Amber did not give them the money. Absolutely terrible, but not surprising. Mm -mm. One more point about this whole money hungry thing. My personal opinion, as somebody who's been doing this for a long time, is that Beck has a very great money-making opportunity on their channel. At any moment, Beck can choose to go and talk about their story for as long as they want. Well, she doesn't even have to do that direction. She might have other content. I think you mentioned she wants to do hiking stories. That's something I cover. I like to cover the hiking stories. Um, she wants to cover other kinds of material. She wants her channel to be positive. She doesn't want to have to like keep reliving all of these horrors that happened in her life. You know what I mean? Oh, I might have to take another break. My phone is overheating again, you guys. What is the temp right now? Hold up. So it's 81. Um, it's going to peak off at roughly 3. But my phone is so old, I can't keep it from overheating. Okay, let's try this again. Oh my god, it's leaf blowing Friday. I mean, it's leaf blowing Tuesday, it's leaf blowing Wednesday, it is leaf blowing Friday. And so it's very difficult to actually like have enough of a chance to actually do one of these videos anymore. And there was some other weird ass chick walking around the pool yelling very loudly about how she cheated on her boyfriend calling out my name like i had something to do with it but i guess jenna is a pretty common name but she also mentioned karina and amber lynn so what the fuck just happened i don't think she even had a key fob to the pool she just walked over there, was having a really loud conversation about how she was convinced to kiss somebody. I don't care. I don't care about what's going on in your world, girl. That's not what I'm covering. Okay. Or monetize whatever kind of content, get donations, get super chats on their, their own channel and their own live stream.
I can just give you my own personal experience. Amber Lynn is calling Beck money hungry, but Beck purposefully wanted to do a Q&A on someone else's channel. If Beck was really that money hungry, like Amber Lynn claims, Beck would have never wanted to do a Q&A on my channel. They would have just done it on their channel. Like I said, a wealth of opportunity on their own channel. They have this. Yeah, this is true with Alexis as well, because Alexis actually wanted to do an interview with Jordy. And because he didn't feel comfortable with it, she ultimately did it on her own channel. And there was enough interest that people started watching. And I believe she recently got monetized. So all that early content that she was dishing out, she didn't make any money on that. Subscribers, people are interested in their story. And at any moment, they have every right to do it on their channel and to earn their own super chats and their own money. And they choose not to. Amber Lynn is choosing to go on her channel and monetize everybody else's drama, okay? And she's done that for years. How is Beck money hungry then? Beck wanting to do this on my channel instead of their own pretty much solidifies to me that they are not money hungry. Also, I... Yeah, that's the thing. Amber Lynn, Chantel, Eugenia, every time you hurt people in your life, there will be consequences and you don't know how that's what it was it was react right it um it's restate in that particular the the usage you were you using that in but um I don't like to use react either, even though I am a reaction channel. I like respond. But in the case of covering these lol cows, I am reacting because it's not like they're giving me something to respond to directly. They're not calling out my name. They're definitely making it apparent that they're watching me. And they're taking talking points from me, but they're not calling out my name, right? I think that there's a very large difference between surviving and survival and being money hungry. Amberlynn Reed left Beck, as far as Beck is concerned, and in Beck's own words, with $200 and go fend for yourself. Go do everything for yourself. I don't care. You know, you broke up with me. Never even giving Beck the money that- Merry Christmas, Beck. Merry Christmas. They earned during the live streams. They earned that money. And so later on, Beck did accept donations from people that wanted to give Beck money. That was for survival. That was for paying the rent. There's a very big difference between surviving and being money hungry. And Amber Lynn would never know anything about that because, Amber, here's a question yet again. Why did you take Beck's money from the live stream? One last point about this money thing. YouTubers get paid per CPM and RPM and there's all these words. It's basically how much do you get paid per 1,000 views? When you make a lot of views fast, I mean, come on. Amber Lynn has literally hundreds of thousands of views that were garnered pretty fast on those live streams. She made hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> all together and thousands of dollars per live streams plus super chat. How crazy are we all that we're basically watching her? First of all, I don't click directly on either uh, any of the three of these people. I don't click directly on them. I always give my clicks to react channels, but can, I mean, can you imagine that there are that many people out there who are willing to give their coin to these women by clicking on their channels directly? Plus super chats and the only thing that Beck saw was $200. My personal opinion is that, and this is just an opinion, not a fact, I think that Amber was upset 
and angry that Beck broke up with her and wanted to punish Beck. But she was literally already involved with another woman. Why was she torturing her like that? How has Amber manipulated you? What did she say to get you into the relationship? Well, um, I wanted to start off very slow. And I was, but I was moving too slow for her. Um, uh -oh. So one day she was just like, there's a line of people who want to be with me. So if you're not going to be with me, then you need to uh, leave. Wow. What a wonderful person you are, Amber. I just had to interject. I haven't been interjecting too much and interrupting. Beck, I'm really sorry that you felt like you needed that affection, right? I would walk. I'm just being real with you. If somebody put that kind of ultimatum in front of me, I would have been like, fucking go. You think you know so many people that will be willing to date your goddamn 500 pound ass? You do you. Beck, so please forgive me. I don't believe you, Amberlynn, that there was a line of people wanting to be with you. And you'll see that later on. If someone really wanted to be with Amber other than Beck, she would have just ran to them because she just wants to be with anybody. I think that's a lie. Okay? That's a lie. That's a lie. And I didn't want to lose that friendship. I, she said she wasn't interested in being friends. And I didn't want to lose the friendship. I was enjoying hanging. Oh my god, it sounds exactly like Alexis, doesn't it, you guys? Out with her and getting to know her. So I just rushed into it. I was like, okay, fine, we'll be in a relationship. And it was just like after that I felt stuck and obligated and like she definitely made it known to me that she did not have anybody else which one was it amber is it that you had a line of people when you met beck waiting to be in a relationship with you or is it that you did not have anyone else see how five seconds ago i told you that i thought it was a lie well, it Ooh, was. Yeah. Girl, you a lie, Amberlynn. You are Ooh, lying, yeah. as always. So, you understand how it can be both? I think at the time, this is just my opinion, I think, it, like, towards, like, when she pretty much broke Beck down and got Beck to be in a relationship with her, uh, pretty much that's when Amber admitted the truth. <laughs> Rinse, lather, delulu. Is anyone here really surprised that all the things that some of you thought were true are? I always tell you the rumors are true. That I was all she had. Said that Eric and Ricky still talked to Amber. Did Eric have a convo with me about this before reaching out to Amber? My ex, my ex, when I was trying to kick him out, back, back, back. When I was trying to kick him out of the house, I just started being miserable. I said nothing to him when he came in the house. I, uh just did not acknowledge his presence whatsoever and so after a couple of weeks he said i'm leaving i'm like okay cool so once he left i was able to actually keep him out and that was fine by me but it took actually doing something performative on my part to get that motherfucker out of my house. Um, to be honest, uh, we haven't spoken in almost a year. And uh, whenever I became really depressed, isolated myself. And they got upset with me for doing that and not texting them. Um, so they stopped talking to me. And so I never tried to fight for that because that had happened other times before where they would just stop talking to me and I would have to beg for them to talk to me again but I would go through bouts of depression and isolate these sound like really horrible people Beck I've kicked a lot of people out of my life for being horrible to me um, you sound way more patient than I am I'm pretty patient like I'll wait a long time you have to get me really fucking pissed before I actually do something about it. But I have had to kick people out of my life. On 
many occasions. I'm 50, so I got five decades worth of this shit going on. ...myself from everyone. So, I mean, it wasn't like I was doing it to them. But, um, yeah, we don't talk. We had that a, a little falling out there. Um, so, whatever they do, I really don't care what Amber does either. Okay, so this... I have a pact. So it was a big topic of discussion for years. People had wondered. And I want to thank Beck so much for answering this question with candor. Basically, Eric and Ricky and Beck are no longer friends. And Beck is saying that, see, Beck wasn't doing well mentally and pretty much isolated themselves, which is understandable. Um, my personal opinion, this is just my opinion. I think when your friend is going through a hard time, you know, mentally or whatever the case may be, you do not dump them even if they don't want to talk even if they need some time off you check on them in my personal opinion you do not stop talking to them just because they isolate themselves that's just my opinion of a good friend sir the big mystery has been revealed i do feel bad no you're right karina like uh once i was attacked by that dog my most trusted volunteers were checking in on me making sure i had food making sure I wasn't falling into a deep depression. They were calling me, they were checking up on me. I have a lot of contacts who do this regularly to make sure I'm not falling into a black hole. That's what real friends are. And these aren't even supposed to be my real friends. These are people I volunteered with in politics, right? So I'm not even like sharing a lot about my personal life with them, but they knew I was injured and they wanted to know I was going to be okay. For Beck, for losing friends when they needed the friends the most, but uh, in life we always learn who our friends are, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, well, I've talked about why Amber and I broke up, um, but there were other times where we tried to break up, and it was me trying to break up with her, and she would argue with me and beg me and exhaust me until I would just give in and stay. Um, that happened a few different times, um, and there was... A few different times that people in my life tried to get me to leave her. Um, my family had an intervention with me. They took me to a park and was like, you know, we are begging you to leave her. You are different. You aren't the same Beck that we used to know. Uh, we're worried about you. Um, we just don't think this is a healthy relationship. And I was just so depressed at that point I didn't care about myself I didn't care about anything I felt stuck I felt it's what I deserved um I felt like I had nowhere to go if I were to leave um I don't know I just there were many factors as to why but uh, my family did do an intervention with me and there were also times when I would be hanging out with Eric and Ricky playing video games uh, and Amber would set time okay it's getting circular we already heard all this earlier in the stream and my phone is overheating so I'm gonna wrap it up here I'm gonna give you the link to Karina Kaboom and you guys do what you want to do I would highly suggest uh, subscribing to her channel giving her a like on this exclusive interview and if you like the extra commentary i gave i would appreciate the like and subscribe as well so that's all i got for you today it's oh 59 minutes and 15 seconds so it's only it's almost an hour long video on my end and I covered almost all of it but it is getting circular and playing some of the same footage that was earlier in the video so I, I don't think we need to keep 
coming back to it over and over again, but that's just my opinion. I don't know, you guys.